Hello, and welcome to Tool Time with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library. Each week, I'm bringing you Tool Time, which is an overview of some of the materials that we have in the Makerspace. I figured since we can't be together right now in our Makerspace at Southwest Branch, we can at least learn about some of the um, different equipment that we offer so that when we are able to open, you can come back in, start inventing, start building, and start creating. So each week at 5 p.m., you can find on Facebook and on YouTube our Tool Time videos. We've covered hammers, screwdrivers, 3D printing, and this week we're covering soldering. Now, soldering is used for a variety of different purposes. Uh, you can use it to uh, connect metal pipes. You can use it to connect all kinds of different wires. Most commonly in the maker space, we use soldering to uh, wire electronics. Um, and we often hold intro to soldering classes. So I thought I'd kind of give you a little bit of that overview, uh, but instead, online today. So let's learn a little bit about soldering and the equipment first, and then I'm going to lead you through a simple soldering project so that you can get a sense of what it's like. Um, soldering is actually very inexpensive to get started with. You can get a soldering iron for $15, $25. The rest of the equipment is pretty simple. You can order it online or find it in your local hardware store. So this is something that's really easy to get started with and opens up a wide range of possibilities in working with electronics, both as a hobby and eventually professionally. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's learn a little bit about soldering. Um, so let's start by meeting our tool. All right, here are the parts of a soldering iron. In general, you have the wand, of course you have your cord, and then you come up to your heating element and your soldering tip. Um, your handle is generally gonna have some kind of handle cover that's rubberized to make it easy grip. That's really important. Make sure that's always in good shape. Um, your cord usually is not going to be very long because you don't want this to be something that people can trip over. So I usually use a, um, you know, six outlet adapter uh, with a long cord and uh, attach it that way. And that way I also have a switch to turn my um, soldering iron off and on. You're generally not going to open up your soldering iron <laughs> to see all of this stuff, but you may um, need to undo this nut um, to remove your soldering tip because you can change your soldering tip. There are a couple different shapes and eventually they do wear out and they need to be replaced. So um, it's important to know how your soldering tip needs to be replaced. Sometimes there's a little screw that holds it in. Sometimes it's just a nut like this, but um, you're gonna wanna read the instructions and make sure you know how to do that when you need to replace the tip. And you're also gonna wanna make sure you know what tip you're using so you can easily get a replacement. But the most important thing to know is this is the wand. This is a pen style. Um, soldering iron most people start with and you hold it literally the way you would hold a pencil. Important thing to note, always hold it on the wand portion, never on the metal portion, okay? Ever, 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 ever. All right, so I mentioned tips. Basically the tip transfers the heat, raising the temperature of the metal until it's the you know melting point of the solder. It doesn't actually melt the solder. You're not trying to transfer melted solder to your piece. You're trying to heat the actual circuit board enough that the solder melts onto it. And this will give you a good wick where the solder kind of goes into the hole um, and holds on to your piece well. So most irons will give you um, an option to change your tip. A conical tip, which is what this is right here, that tiny point, that's usually used for precision electronics, like we're gonna do today. I'm using a conical tip for our project today. But a wedge tip, like you see, or a chisel tip, I'm sorry, here, that's kind of a wedge. Um, and you can see here, this is a nice chisel. These are usually used to solder wire to wire or for larger components. Um, it's I don't tend to use it as often. I almost always use a conical tip from the type of work um, I do in the maker space. Um, Irons. So there are lots of different types of irons out there. Most are either pen or gun. So for electronics, you're usually going to use a pen style um, soldering iron. You may use a gun for larger electronics or like heavy repeat work. Um, sometimes if you're doing, um, you know, surface mount electronics, you might use a gun. But um, most of the times you're going to use this style pen um soldering iron. And like I said, you're always going to hold the wand. This is going to be the heated part here. 
Um, they come in different wattages. They're always going to be, in America anyway, 120 volts, but they may come in different wattages. A good starting place is, 20, is 15 to 30 watts. Some will give you the ability to vary that. Um, it's really going to affect how fast your soldering iron heats up and how hot it gets. So especially if you're very new or if you're a younger person starting with soldering, you're going to want to go 15 watts. It's a little safer. And that's what I started my girls on when they were about five years old for making their first um, items. And then you can move up as you go. There are soldering stations, as you can see here. Those soldering stations allow you to adjust the temperature um, you know, pretty much across a, a wide range of temperatures. And that gives you a lot more ability to do specialty projects, to adapt to different types of materials that you're soldering. Um, and there are also hybrids where uh, you have temperature settings that allow you to set everything and tips that you can change to make it useful for wood uh, etching and um, or wood burning rather, and all kinds of different and foam burning and foam cutting and soldering. And so you can get that type too, that actually gives you a really wide range of uses. Um, but to start out your basic $15, 15 watt soldering iron with a conical tip is a great place to get started. Even that type is going to heat up to over 800 degrees to be able to melt solder. So it's not like you're using something uh, <laughs> that, that isn't going to get the job done. All right, some accessories that you're going to need. First and foremost, you're going to need solder. Um, solder is this kind of wire that we use, and you can see it here. Okay, it's uh, it actually melts at around 800 degrees. So the whole idea of soldering is that we are melting metal to metal uh, to fuse them together. Usually, there's a flux or rosin core, and that helps the solder flow more evenly, um, and that's really important in getting a good connection. And usually your solder these days are lead-free. We always suggest lead-free unless you absolutely have to use a leaded um, solder. It's just a lot safer. Lead is poisoning to humans. Um, so most solders these days are made of a tin copper alloy. It comes in different gauges and widths. In general, the thinner the wire, the um, smaller the gauge, the more delicate the project, the smaller the joint you're trying to solder. Okay, so... Um, and then as you get wider and wider, that's for larger and larger products, uh, projects. So if you're unsure, ask at the store. Um, you know, I usually use something in the uh, 0.032 inch, you know, width. Um, but you can, even if you're ordering online, they'll, they'll tell you what that particular solder is useful for. And some of it will be personal preference too. Um, a stand is absolutely important. You must have some kind of a stand. It can even be something simple. You do not want your soldering iron rolling on you. You don't want it getting away from you. You want to know where it is at all times, and you don't want it to burn the surface that you're working on. You want some kind of a sponge, either a little piece of like conventional actual sponge wet with some water or a brass or copper sponge that you can see here. That's used to clean your tip, as you'll see when we actually do our project, to keep it from oxidizing so you get good heat transfer. Um, you want some safety gear, uh, notably goggles. Goggles are important. Every now and again, you will get a little um, splash of uh, solder or it'll pop, and the last thing you want is 800 uh, degree liquid metal flying into your eye. Um, so it seems... You know, it's rare that you're going to have a problem, but goggles, wear goggles. It's just better to be safe than sorry in that situation. A helping hand, uh, I don't have a picture of it here, but it's basically a magnifying glass with little clips on it that can be really useful when you are using a um, soldering iron um, just to hold things in place. And then a solder uh, wick or a solder sucker. I'll show you one of those in a bit. Um, Basically, it's there so that if you make a mistake, you put too much solder on or you solder the wrong spot, you can remove that solder easily. Um, so it's, it's useful to have around, especially when you're starting out, because mistakes are going to get made. Okay, safety. Um, I'm going to remind you of this every single time. Every time I'm going to say this. And that is the most important tool is you, your body, your mind. So you have to protect yourself and use your wits and your body to keep everyone else safe and to keep your project safe. So wear your protective gear, stay alert, practice awareness, and always follow safety rules in the makerspace. Saving a few minutes is not worth a permanent injury. And let me tell you, 800 degree Fahrenheit solder against your skin is not something I would wish on anyone. It doesn't feel good. Yes, it has happened to me. 
know you will not enjoy it. So safety, safety, safety. All right. When working with solder, well-ventilated area, even though it's a relatively safe substance compared to the old lead days, um, it still does create fumes that can be bad for your eyes, bad for your lungs. So if you can't work in a large space, make sure that there's a fan going. They even sell specialized fans uh, to ventilate areas where you're soldering. And you may want to consider, especially if you're working with kids, keep the project relatively short. You don't want to spend a lot of time soldering and building up those fumes. So keep it to a short 15 minute, 30 minute session, um, especially if you don't have a lot of ventilation. Um, always protective eye gear for splashes of hot solder. I've had it happen and been very thankful that I had my glasses or my um, eye protection on. And make sure you wash your hands after soldering. There, again, there are chemicals in the solder that you do not want to accidentally end up ingesting. So it's just good practice to wash your hands before and wash your hands after. Um, soldering irons, of course, as I mentioned, can reach 800 degrees or more. So make sure you know where your soldering iron is at all times. Don't put it behind you. Don't put really long cords. Don't hook up lots of extension cords. Um, use a good um, stand to keep your soldering iron where it belongs um, and just generally practice safety. That little soldering iron can cause a lot of trouble if it's not uh, kept track of. Uh, if it hits paper, it is likely to burn it. So that's probably the most important thing with soldering. Know where your soldering iron is. Keep it safe. Okay, so soldering a joint. We're always going to start by tinning the tip. You may do this before in and after each project. You may do this a couple times during a project, depending on your tip, depending on how it's oxidizing, depending on what you're working on. And sometimes just personal preference. I tend to, to tin my tip every couple of joints that I'm doing. Um, and what this means is that we are going to actually add solder. Okay, we're gonna melt solder onto the heated tip of our soldering iron. And this will help improve the heat transfer from the iron to what you're soldering. Um, so it will also reduce any kind of wear and tear on your tip. Um, eventually they're gonna get pitted and rough, but you wanna keep them smooth and um, easy to work with for as long as possible. And always tin your tip when you're done. So at the start of a project and at the end of a project, you're gonna clean and tin your tip every time. Okay, you're gonna mount the component. That's the first step. So you're gonna insert the leads of your, for example, an LED we're working with today into the holes of your circuit board. Okay, so there'll be little holes your LED is gonna be on the proper side and you're gonna insert it through the holes. Often, these will be directional and you'll need to know positive and negative and what way to orient your LED. I'll show you that in the project. Um, you're gonna turn the board over and just bend the legs or leads of your component so that it doesn't fall back out to about a 45 degree angle. Um, and you also wanna make sure it has a good connection with your copper pad because the solder is going to flow around that lead and a little bit into that hole and that's what's going to give you a good connection you want that to happen okay now you're going to heat your joint you're going to keep the soldering iron kind of at an angle in the sweet spot we call that where it's not you're not pointing it down like you're writing you're not poking at that um at that joint you're keeping it kind of flat to that joint and remember you're heating the copper pad as best you can because once that gets um, to the right temperature, usually, you know, anywhere from 325 to 400 degrees Celsius, uh, um, yeah, Celsius, which is gonna be twice as much Fahrenheit, um, is gonna be enough to melt your solder. You can adjust it. If it starts smoking, that usually means that your temperature is just a little too high. Or, uh, so you can switch your solder or you can bring the temperature down if you have an adjustable temperature soldering iron. Um, you're going to touch your tip to the copper pad, keep it against the side, and um, you're going to need a couple of seconds to get that pad heated up. Remember, we're not trying to melt the solder. We're trying to heat the pad so that it melts the solder when we um, add it. Speaking of which, you're going to hold your soldering iron on that copper pad, and you're going to touch the solder to the joint, not to the tip of the iron. Now, sometimes it's really tight and it's gonna happen, but you'll end up with just kind of wasting solder that way. But you wanna to touch it to the joint itself because again, we want that solder to kind of flow into that hole. Um, and you want the joint hot enough to melt the solder itself. If the joint is too cold, you won't get a good connection. Um, and if you accidentally lift your soldering iron and your solder sticks, you can just bring your soldering back in and heat it up again. 
And that's basically what you do. And then you're just going to cut away your leads when you're done. So what makes a good solder joint? <laughs> um, first and foremost, you're never going to use the very tip. You're going to use kind of the side, that sweet spot of your soldering iron. You want to touch your um, soldering iron to the copper pad, okay, to the component and not like in there. Okay. So you want to kind of touch both of them at the same time. You want to hold it in contact while you add your solder and the solder is going to touch the component or the um, hole, the joint itself, not the soldering iron. And that's what's going to give you a good connection. Don't try to put a whole bunch of solder onto your um, tip and then transfer it. It's not like using glue. Okay. That's not going to work. You're just going to end up with a mess. You're not going to end up with a good connection. Um, and you want to use a sponge, brass or a wet sponge to clean your tip often because as, as you use your soldering iron, just even particles in the air are going to oxidize onto that hot tip and it's going to form a film and it's going to get dirty and you have to keep that clean to get good heat transfer. So just make it a habit. Um, a good solder joint should look a little bit like a Hershey's Kiss. Okay. And you can see here, the solder kind of goes up the side of your component and down into that hole and fills it well. And if you have that kind of a joint, you're going to have a really good connection. You don't want a solder ball on top. Okay. Because it's not hitting the metal ring and you're not going to have a connection. The electricity isn't going to flow. You're not going to complete your circuit. So you're going to, you can add a bit of flux if you have it, or you can just heat up the component again until it flows down. Um, Sometimes you get a um, connection that's really flat or that isn't complete. You're going to need to add more solder for that. Um, <laughs> this is funny. Ugly. So ugly. Um, yeah. You don't want something uneven like that. That's not going to give you a good connection. And this is the biggie. This is common, especially when you're starting out and you're new to soldering. Um, you'll add too much solder and it will touch the next joint over. And when that happens, that will short your circuit. Okay. And it will bypass your components. If that happens, you're going to get out that solder wick where you're going to get out the solder sucker and you're going to remove the solder and clean it all up and start again. Okay. Um, just be careful when you do that. And I've, I've done it accidentally myself. Uh, you don't want to accidentally damage the copper underneath when removing the solder. So be very careful. Just like with carpentry, you kind of not measure twice, but you know, think twice, make sure that you know exactly what you're soldering before you get started. All right. If you want to learn more about soldering, I have a couple resources here. I'd love to show you. The first is from makerspaces.com and they have an entire, um, website on how to solder. So that's really great. Um, I will put that link in our description. Spark Fun has tons of fantastic tutorials on electronics specifically, um, and they are also a company that sells really good quality electronics and hobby equipment. So if you're looking for a place to get just the right starting uh, soldering iron, I really do recommend so uh, Spark Fun. They are excellent. And um, let's see, last one. Okay. Oh. This is um, the Mighty Ohm. They actually made a comic book on soldering is easy. And it is one of the things I love to print out and share with um, folks that are getting started because not only does it tell you how to solder, it goes through all kinds of safety tips, tells you how circuits work, goes through different components that you're going to solder. It is a great, comprehensive, very visual guide. It's wonderful for younger um, makers who, um, maybe don't want to sit and read a book or read a website. Um, it's just a really great resource. It's 100% free and, um, it will get you through any soldering project as a beginner. So I highly, highly recommend that as a resource. Okay. So that's the basics of soldering. Why don't we actually put this to work and make a project? Okay. Welcome to our document camera. So I've got a very simple soldering iron here. Um, it's a 25 watt uh, soldering iron, so it's great for a beginner. Um, wattage really just affects you know, how fast and how, uh, it heats up and what temperature it can reach. So this will get over 800 degrees without a problem. Um, I have not plugged it in yet, but I always wanna do a little inspection before I get started. I'm start to get my glasses and goggles on, always with our safety gear. So I've got goggles over my glasses because I want to shield the sides a little bit more than my glasses are able. Um, 
Okay, so we have here your basic tip, okay, a conical tip. Um, this one's getting a little old and, and uh, dirty, so that is definitely something that we're gonna want to uh, clean up. Uh, but you always wanna start by just checking to make sure that it's adhered well, you know, that's it inserted well, it's not uh, falling out. Make sure it's in good condition. Make sure your handle, uh, your wand portion of your uh, soldering iron is in good repair, that the grip is in good repair so that you are able to hold on to everything uh, well. So I'm just gonna slide that up, make sure that's on. Okay, this looks like it's in good shape. Now this is not a variable temperature um, soldering iron. This just heats up and that's it. So it's really easy to get started with. Um, of course, I have a, I have a more complex 3D uh, <laughs> soldering um, stand and rig, but uh, for today I wanted to work with something that you know a beginner might use. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in so it can warm up. Soldering irons, I like to plug my soldering irons into um, a power strip so that I can easily turn it off if necessary. I've got a little stand here, nothing fancy. You can get much nicer stands, but again, I'm going for kind of the basic materials that the average person might start with. Um, and this is also representative of what we have in the makerspace for common use. So I've got my my stand, I've got my uh, soldering iron, and just trying to get my cord kind of situated nicely here. So you can see I'm just making sure I never want my soldering iron to touch my mat, and I've got a protective mat. I'd rather damage this than my desk. And I want to always be very aware of where my soldering iron is, so I don't want to uh, have it out of sight, have it behind me, have it off to the side, always somewhere that's nearby. Um, I've got, this is actually copper. You can get brass, um, sponge. This is a cheap dollar store copper um, scrubby that I use. Um, I do have a sponge as well that I'll put a little water on. Um, I've got my diagonal cutters and a pair of needle nose pliers, always good to have on hand when doing soldering projects. Um, I've got my solder, so I'm using a 6040, which is a tin and nickel uh, rosin or flux core solder. This is, let's see, our 0 0.02 inch uh, diameter. Now, as I mentioned before, your solder uh, width or gauge is going to be based on the type of project you're doing. So the more fine uh, and small the project, the thinner uh, and higher gauge the wire. <laughs> um, so that's going to be my solder. Got that. I also tend to keep a solder sucker on hand. Um, this works very simply by you push this down. You would hold this against your um, mistake, basically. You would warm that solder and then this button um, creates a vacuum and it sucks the solder up into your solder sucker. So it will remove any kind of um, mistake that you might have. Uh, so this is really handy to have on hand. You can also use a solder wick. Um, I just prefer the solder sucker. Kids really enjoy it. It's fun. Um, you can, uh, of course, cut this to use it. I'm just gonna use it right off the roll. Um, there are also nice little holders that you can use your, for your solder. It's really a matter of personal preference. Our project today, Oh, and I can smell it. Now remember, if you see smoking, it's too hot. <laughs> okay, our project today is a very famous project. Um, anyone who's ever been to a maker fair uh, has probably seen this little robot. This is the Makey robot. Um, and this is their, you know, one of the first um, soldering projects that you can learn if you go to a maker fair. And thousands and thousands of people have done this project. So it's a personal favorite. And uh, it's pretty simple. Comes with a little coin cell battery. and it comes with two blinky LEDs and it comes with the pin back and the battery holder. So that's gonna hold the battery on and this is going to actually um, attach so that you can wear um, your cool pin as a, or your cool electronics project as a pin, okay? Um, so you wanna make sure that you organize your pieces so you don't lose anything. A note on LEDs. I'm going to zoom in here because we're going to be working close up. New note on LEDs. LEDs have a long lead and a short lead. You can call them legs if you prefer. The long is always the positive. The short is always the negative. That's going to matter because the energy from the battery has to flow from positive to positive, out through the negative, and around in the circuit in the correct way. It's directional. 
So if you don't make sure that you are attaching your LEDs in the proper way, you're going to have a problem. And you will note on here that there are pluses and minuses. So you can actually see where those are. There's a minus, there's a plus. You can probably see it better than I can with my glasses. All right. So you want to, we're going to make sure that when we attach these, we attach them correctly. Okay. Give me one moment and we will get started. Okay. So I zoomed in a little bit. I've got all my pieces ready. I have wet my sponge in case I need it and uh, we are ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is tin our uh, tip. Okay. Of our soldering iron. So just going to do that. That's it. Doesn't take a whole lot. Just a little bit of a uh, solder and it melts right on there. Ta -da. Now remember the, um, the tip of your soldering iron is not actually there to like somehow attach the solder. The tip of the soldering iron is there to heat your surface so that the solder attaches well. Um, we are going to start by attaching our battery holder and this makes it pretty easy. This kit makes it very easy to see how that goes on. We're going to just flip it. Oop. This is where, uh, sometimes with this kit, a little piece of tape can be really helpful. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep this on camera, but I'm in pretty tight right now. Okay. So you may be able to see right there at the knees, the two little pieces of the battery holder are coming up and we just need to solder those to keep them in place. I'm actually just going to see if I can prop that with maybe our battery. Yeah. The battery will hold that kind of a little bit more in place while we work. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my, um, soldering iron and I'm just going to hold it. Remember kind of sideways against the metal. And I'm just going to hold it there for a couple seconds as the metal gets hot. And that's what we're looking to do. And then should be able to, as soon as it's warm enough, Come on. This takes a little time. Especially since I just warmed it up. Okay. Now, if I had a variable temperature soldering iron, I would probably bring the temperature down just a bit here. I'm sorry. I'm not as close up to this as I normally would be because I'm trying to film it, which is a whole new challenge for me. There we go. So there we go. We've got one knee. Come on over here and heat this one. And this is where um, I showed you the picture earlier of a helping hand. It can be very, very useful for moments like this. Or sometimes just a literal helping hand, right? A friend to hold it in place. And there we go. Two little knees soldered into place. So, see? Now, that's going to take a little time to cool. It cools surprisingly quickly. You can, of course, take the time to really make sure that's um, just right, but it's wobbling on me. So I'm probably just going to keep on moving. No, I'm not. I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. Um, okay. Oh, and see what I did there? I took my soldering iron away and it froze. Oh no, what am I going to do? It's no big deal. You just heat it up again. Easy peasy. Okay. And now we flip and we get this battery out of the way. We don't want our battery around when we're soldering because heat plus battery is not good. I'm going to put our pin through from the front and we are going to go ahead and just solder that on. Now it's nice and flat. So this is a little easier and I should have brought my helping hands. I don't know why I didn't think to bring it. That's kind of silly of me. I do have one. I find it very useful. I don't know if there's any point in having that camera there right now. Can't really say hi. Okay. And here we go. And you can see, boom, easy. That attached nicely. Sometimes if you're new to soldering and you have a kit like this, you kind of want to go, you might want to go for like the biggest one first. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Do you see what happened there? The heat actually transferred through the brass tack to the surface and melted it just a little bit. If you have a silicone, like a proper silicone mat made for um, soldering, it's really great to have on hand. Okay. Now we're going to add our LEDs. And as I said before, you got to look positive and negative, right? So my long leg has to go through the positive. I'm just going to slide those leads through. This is called, okay. Through hole soldering is what we're doing as opposed to a surface mount. Now I'm going to go ahead and just 
stretch these a little bit because otherwise they fall out on me and that's really kind of frustrating. And I'm gonna go ahead and organize both of them into the same spot. So what's happening underneath that you can't really see because it's covered with all kinds of cool paint and enamel is that there's a tiny little PCB board inside here that is actually creating the circuit and connecting everything. Okay, so are we on camera? There we go. Now I've got my LEDs in. Make sure I've got some solder ready to go. I'm going to give my tip a quick cleaning on just this, I'm just wiping, here I'll show you. Just wiping my tip, getting any oxidation because that's what happens is that um, the tip oxidizes over time as you're using it. And that just means that basically chemicals in the air um, adhere to the, the tip and can make it dirty and not conduct heat as well. So I just give it a quick cleaning and tin it again. It's good to go. Okay. All right, let's get these LEDs on. So uh, I don't have quite as long a cord as I would like to do this. Again, filming this is much harder than it normally would be for me. I will be honest. So I'm going to come in again, just keeping that nice and against the LED. I'm going to move my solder. Boom. Oop, oop, missed it. This is challenging to do when I can't be as close as I'd like. I get it? I got it this time. Okay, and now it's very important when you're doing this that you not cross the solder. Not, um, I'm going to clean the tip again. I'm a little hot right now. Not sure why. Probably because my, most likely because my tip really needs to be cleaned and replaced. So I'm running a little warmer than I would like. These things happen. But yeah, it shouldn't really be smoking. There we go. That's a nice joint. See if we can do better on this one too. That's better. So you want that nice little Hershey's Kiss, right? That's what we saw in the video. We want that nice little Hershey's Kiss looking uh, joint. Okay, here we go. Let me go on this one first. I'm gonna make my solder. Oh, I went too slow. There we go. Hershey's Kiss. Beautiful. And last one. I'm going to my solder. Oh. I did not anticipate how challenging that would be to do for the camera, but I think I got it. Okay. And that's, you know, and again, the more you practice, the quicker that goes. Okay. That went pretty quickly for me because I have done this once or twice before. <laughs> um, and you know, I am not by some champion solder. I don't do enough of it. I don't do it day after day after day um, to be like some kind of amazing solderer, but I can get the job done. Okay, so now we've got our little solder joint. Before you cut anything, we wanna make sure we test. Um, which way does this battery go in? Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna put in our battery, uh, plus side up, see, and there we go. Blinking lights. We have a working pin. Yay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that battery. Just push out the pencil. And now we got to finish up. So we are going to get our uh, clippers, our diagonal cutters. And you're just going to carefully cut the leads from the LEDs. And again, you do not want to do that on any components until you've tested your circuit and ensured that it works. Because if you need to fix something, it's going to be much harder to do with small um, pieces than it is with larger pieces. Okay. And now where did I put my battery? I lost it. Here we go. Battery in. And we'll zoom out a bit so we can see our really cool pin. And we'll just put our pin back on there. And there we go. A simple Simple circuit, okay? And that's what soldering is all about. 
I hope that you enjoyed that introduction to soldering. Um, we love to solder and we regularly host those kinds of projects in the makerspace. So keep an eye out once we do reopen the library. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get some of those back onto our schedule. And we're hoping to offer more uh, complex, uh, intermediate and advanced projects as well. In the meantime, I hope that you get started at home. And if you do, please let us know. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me. My email is sroberts at warrenlib.org. And I'm always happy to answer your questions. Be sure to check our website, uh, which I'm going to put up for you right now. Okay, at warrenlib.org, we have an entire schedule of great events for the summer, as well as our summer reading challenges. So even though we can't be together at the library, we can still share our love of reading, share our love of learning online this summer. All right, that's it for me. Uh, this was Tool Time from the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the library. I look forward to seeing you soon, but in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making. Take care. <laughs>